RPA is the drive toward integration of intelligent principles into the core of RPA platforms themselves. So autonomous RPA, that is RPA that is self-defining, self-managing and self-healing. The line between DPA, IPaaS, ETL and RPA are all blurring, so a future trend towards intelligent automation platforms that provide the means to create, manage and control multimodal operations across both human and digital workers is very exciting. Start with positioning automation as a strategic imperative, not a tactical fix. That means buying at the top. It's not, if it's not led from the top, then you need to gather all the evidence on how similar enterprises in similar markets are reaping returns on investment, and these need to be at hand. Tactical automation misses the transformative potential of automation and creates technical debt. So that means somebody in the organizations needs to clearly articulate the company's vision and outcomes from automation efforts for the business and for its employees. The next thing to do is to either build or buy the talent pipeline to scale the automation. You need to engage with external experts and develop your internal talent and expertise across the automation landscape, whether it's RPA or IPaaS or process intelligence or other AI and machine learning technologies. And lastly, you need to recognize that ROI comes with scale, not from just a few. It costs a fair amount to set up just one or two digital workers and the return on that investment is, is much lower than if you are to scale where you're going to see a huge amount of benefit where hundreds of digital workers can give you far higher returns than a few. Enterprises need to be aware that automation silos are forming as many of the applications are integrating AI and automation so you have intelligent automation in ERPs like in SAP or in ITSMs like in ServiceNow or in CRMs like Salesforce and if you lack an overall strategy of how you're going to use intelligent automation and artificial intelligent technologies you'll end up with a lot of redundant functionality and potentially disjointed governance. To fix this enterprises should articulate an intelligent automation strategy and prioritize the coordination of data and work not in a specific platform, not across a specific function or a technology, but across their human and digital workforce. So rationalize the automation portfolio, take stock of all the variety of systems that now offer some type of automation, and use the right tools for the right job. Find the right process and the industry-specific AI solution, but make sure there's oversight and governance. And lastly, align to business needs and ongoing process optimization opportunities engage with process optimization service providers, folks who deliver business process consulting and intelligent business process management services. Reimagine your business through intelligent automation. Look, we're far beyond the early adopters, although not in all use cases and not in all industries. We're witnessing the arrival of the early majority with the continuing expansion of use cases powered through a whole range of deep tech and AI technologies. And some of these include leveraging greater amounts of natural language processing. So we're seeing more use cases involving automatic extraction of information from unstructured documents like emails and contracts, and use cases that involve conversational computing, such as chatbots and intelligent virtual agents that provide consumers with faster and more consistent answers without tedious searching. There's lots of development in complex analytical workloads and these are use cases that involve machine learning to bring together interactional, transactional, financial and operational data sources to not only provide insight but to segment, profile and make decisions. We're also seeing contextual triggering of digital workers and use cases that refer to AI infused automated triggering functions that enable execution of attended robots to provide agent assistance by contextually analyzing natural language interaction in near real time. We're also seeing automated inline creation of microprocessors, whereas traditional RPA is mostly focused on long-running processes spanning multiple actions across multiple systems, and they use process and task mining design to uncover these processes 
we're seeing the emergence in the use of intelligent automation, which is AI-based approaches that automatically extract microtasks that are being repeated by the user together with the validation from a human in the loop as to the usefulness of what they've carried out. These are delivering a much higher, greater capacity for automation across the enterprises. And probably most importantly, we're seeing a move towards end-to-end -to -end automation of business functions and greater workflow automation. Now, enterprises, particularly in the regulated industries, are moving beyond the tactical task automation towards complete end-to-end -to -end automation of business functions and a greater human-in-the-loop workforce automation. Governments and large businesses are banging the drum on adopting AI responsibly of embedding ethical principles into AI applications and processes so we can deliver systems that we can trust. The narrative that talks about transparency and explainability is really a continuation of social responsibility and the sustainability that we all need. So we're going to see an increased amount of papers, conferences, webinars, even government diktats on why ethical AI is so important why companies and systems need to provide the means to transparently show what data was used in the training models and how decisions were made by the algorithms that came to be. So there'll be more emphasis on fairness, of manually turning up the dials for positive discrimination. If the existing data being used create models that discriminate against part of society based on age, gender, race or any other factor, there'll be more calls to put in dials so that we can manually correct these.